Hey fam, I'm Simone Boyce. I'm Danielle Robay. And we're the hosts of The Bright Side, the podcast from Hello Sunshine that's guaranteed to light up your day. Check out our recent episode with Bachelorette Hannah Brown, all about growing up and chasing her dreams. It's great to be a healed Hannah. I sometimes miss the chaotic, but it feels better in this body <laughs> to feel more centered and grounded and, and working on that daily. Listen to The Bright Side from Hello Sunshine on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Hey, everyone. This is Molly and Matt, and we're the hosts of Grown Up Stuff How to Adult, a podcast from Ruby Studio and iHeart Podcasts. It's a show dedicated to helping you figure out the trickiest parts of adulting. Like how to start planning for retirement, creating a healthy skincare routine, understanding when and how much to tip someone, and so much more. Let's learn about all of it and then some. Listen to Grown Up Stuff How to Adult on America's number one podcast network, iHeart. Open your free iHeart app and search Grown Up Stuff. Grown Up Stuff. Our iHeart Radio Music Festival, presented by Capital One, September 20th and 21st. T-Mobile Arena here in Las Vegas. Stream live only on Hulu. Don't miss Adam. Big Sean, Camila Cabello, Doja Cat, Dua Lipa, Gwen Stefani, Halsey, Hosier, Keith Urban, New Kids on the Block, Paramore, Shabuzi, The Black Crows, Thomas Red. Victoria Monet and more. Buy tickets now at AXS.com. You're listening to In the Vet's Office with Dr. Josie Horchak. All right. Welcome to In the Vet's Office. I am your host, Dr. Josie. And as always, we have the lovely Shannon here as our co-host. Hello. How are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm good. How's how's the vet's office been lately? Any exciting things going on? Or Yeah. Actually, this week I had a great case. I had a lady come in just to kind of paint the picture. She's probably 70 years old, like an older woman, very Southern, thick Southern accent. You can tell she's definitely like smoked a cigarette or two in her day. Yep. And I walk in and she's like, Dr. Josie, I need you to give my dog a mammogram. And I'm like, oh, no, a mammogram. I was like, ma'am, I'm so sorry. We don't do those here. And she starts busting out laughing. She's like, I know, I know, but I do need you to do a titty check. And I'm like, okay. All right. I'm like, I love my job. I love my job. <laughs> I'm like, what do you, what do you mean by a titty check? She's like, well, you know, they're swollen, they're bigger. I just, something's going on. And oh, we know what's going on, girl. Oh, my God, Lord. And her dog was only 10 months old. So oh. I'm thinking maybe she's about to go into her first heat cycle. Right. And so, you know, I do my thing, get on the ground, do a full exam. And lo and behold, her breast tissue is extremely engorged, like very, very thick. Uh, it is not just her going into a heat cycle. And I'm like, you know what? Can I borrow her for one second and come back in? And she's like, absolutely. I want to do a titty check. I want to do a titty check. <laughs> and we take her back to the treatment area. I stick an ultrasound probe on her belly and there are eight heartbeats. Oh, wow. And she's she, very pregnant. And she is very pregnant. I go back in the room and I say, is there any chance she's been in contact knowing full and well she has? Has she been in contact with an intact male? And she says, no. Well, yes, actually, you know, her brother, who's also 10 months, her litter mate, and he's not neutered yet. And I was like, wow. Oh, no. She's pregnant with her brother's puppies. And it really made me think, you know, a lot of owners, and it's no fault of their own, don't realize that once they hit six months of age, like they can make babies. And yeah, you don't think about it when they're with their brother. You think they're no. like, they're like, you know, humans. You're like, oh, they're with their the siblings, mm. they're fine. Right, exactly. That's but not the case. No, Mother Nature took over. Oh, no. And the titty check ended up being a pregnancy check. And she is going to have puppies. We'll see. What was this woman's reaction when you were like, you're about to have eight puppies? Oh, her jaw was on the floor. <laughs> hands on the bench. She was like, Oh my God. I was like, I'm so sorry. Like, please do not pass out in this hospital. So wait, does she have the puppies though? Like, does she have more than one? Of she the has siblings? just the brother and sister from the same litter. Okay. So she bought brother and sister. Yep. Okay. Yep. She bought two puppies at the same time, a boy and a girl, and neither one had been neutered or she spayed got yet. Two for 10 special. She got the two for 10 <laughs> special. Exactly. <laughs> Buy two puppies and you Get eight, yeah, actually, exactly. with one of them. That's, wow. Never a dull moment, y'all. Never a dull moment. Yeah, that's like something you just don't think about. Like, I, we bought 
German Shepherd puppies my mom did when we were in kindergarten and they were brother and sister. And I don't think we ever thought about no. the, you know, the possibility of them. Yeah. I'm not making babies, <laughs> not making fun of her in the slightest. You would never even think of it. And no. then it just yeah happened. So right, yeah, that careful. was our, our case of the week. All right. On to some listener questions. Hello. Uh, well, my dog loves to swim all the time and he just keeps getting ear infections. I don't know what to do about it. So please help. This is a great question. We see this all the time in the summer and really usually it tends to be in dogs with those big, long, floppy ears. Yeah, They'll get moisture trapped inside their ear canals and then it starts this vicious cycle of getting ear infections. And so what I tell owners is you want to buy an ear cleaner. All ear cleaners are not made equal. Definitely get the medicated one from your veterinarian, the ones on like Amazon and Chewy. There are some crazy ear cleaners out there that probably won't do much of anything or can make things worse. Right. And then I recommend every single time without fail after they go swimming or you give them a bath, probably like 30 minutes to an hour after I recommend washing out their ear canals. And I think that people get are surprised when they hear that because they're like, wait, we don't want moisture trapped in their ears, but now you're telling me to like dump ear cleaning solution into their ear canals. Right. But there's different drying ingredients like salicylic acid and ingredients like that that get down into deeper parts of the ear canal and, and get that moisture out. So okay. it's really, really important if your dog loves to swim, clean their ears out every single time. Yeah, I did not know that because mm-hmm. we, our dog Koa, she's always in the mm-hmm. in the pond whenever she gets a chance. Yeah. And she definitely, she doesn't have like the big floppy ears, but she's always got just like uncomfortableness after so yeah. you should be actually rinsing them out technically after they swim yes huh. every single time interesting and don't people- buy like kids earphones <laughs> for them to swim with no <laughs> no earplugs no earplugs okay. um, and people are always saying well how do I clean their ears and there's really no exact science to it I flop that ear over and I I pour the cleaning solution into their ear canal till you see it pooling there's really two separate parts to their ear it takes like a hard 90 degree turn way deep down in the canal and you want it to like trickle all the way down there. So okay. just dump it on in. All right. Well, yep. that's good to know. And I mean, yeah, you'd think like you wouldn't want to put more liquid in there, but it's actually yep. the solution. Yep, exactly. The solution is the solution. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> All right. Do we have any more questions? Hey, Dr. Josie. So I just got a new puppy. He's really energetic. I love running and I really want to start taking him on runs with me. How old does he need to be before I start taking him on runs? Thanks. Puppy owners, love to ask this question. And I think we get like maybe a little scared because you read things online. And Mm -hmm. so if your puppy's out running around the yard, you're going for walks, like that is great. We want them to be active. Now, if you're like a marathon runner and you're clocking miles on concrete and pavement, that's where we need to be careful. Sort of a rule of thumb is most dogs' growth plates close around 12 months of age. Now, the bigger the dog, the later that can be. It can be all the way up to like 18 months, even 24 months and really big like giant breed dogs. So like your Bernese Mountain Dogs, your Great Danes, Granted, those dogs are not probably running marathons. Yeah, to don't begin see with. many St. Bernards <laughs> exactly. going on a 5K. <laughs> exactly. But if you have like a Vishla or a Weimaraner or a Pointer, those kinds of dogs right. that are great running buddies, I say wait until their year of age. And then you can really, you know, from there, don't put them into a 26 miler. But from there, they can start running with you and they should be perfectly fine. Yeah, because I think you probably in your mind, you think like, oh, the more exercise, the better for puppies. It'll like tire them out. Yeah. And you know, they're, they have so much rambunctious energy, but yeah, you'd probably have to be careful. And there's just breeds that are like made for running and yes. not like we had a German shepherd. I used to love running with her, but I was always so scared too, just because they're notorious for having hip problems. Mm. So I never would like run further than, you know, a mile. Yeah. I think, I think you're so right. Like a lot of it is, you know, your dog better than anyone and just watching them and they're going to tell you like when they're tired you're going to know when they don't want to be going another mile like you really have to be kind of in tune with with how they're feeling and so yeah if they're limping if they're kind of holding back if they're not if they don't seem super interested in it it's not about you it's about them yeah. so go finish the rest of your miles and <laughs> let them hang out on the couch yeah that's why I had a French bulldog Boston Terrier mix because I was like she is not going to want to run marathons with me, okay? No. She's not built for this, and neither am I. No. <laughs> She's lucky to get around the block. Yeah, exactly. I didn't buy her thinking, mm, we are going to run together. I love that. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm so excited about our special guest on the show today. I feel like she has such an interesting story with her pet journey. So 
who's who's coming up. Yes, we have Abby Smyers in the vet's office today. She is one of my very dear friends and also the wife of Dan Smyers from Dan and Shay. She has really dedicated the last decade of her life to dog rescues. Right. She works at Wags and Walks here in Nashville. She's been very involved with Proverbs, which is another dog rescue here and is really just an advocate for, for all animals, whether it's the birds in the trees, the deers in the yard. She's just always <laughs> looking out for all of them and is just such a kind and loving soul. So I'm excited to have her in. She also has four rescue dogs herself and I get to help take care of them. So today's episode will be great. Awesome. Let's welcome Abby Spires. Welcome to In the Vet's Office, Abby Smyers. Hi. I'm so excited to have you here. I'm so happy to be here. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. And today... As everyone oh, knows, perfect girl. she sat right on cue. <laughs> this podcast is BYOD and she brought with her the lovely macaroni. This is macaroni. She She's is so the good. Best. Yes. Macaroni. We call her Mac. She has the best ear. She She's does. perfect in every way. Yeah. She's one ear crazy. straight up, one ear down. You actually have a tattoo of her little I ears. I love that. Um, my friend Andrew drew it for me and then I got it tattooed because I love her ears so much. <laughs> it's so cute. So we have a lot of ground to cover today. Yes. Before we dive in, I have to tell one of my favorite stories <laughs> about you. Abby and I really like to walk our dogs together and I think it was last summer, whatever, last year sometime, you text me about 20 minutes before we're supposed to go on our walk. And you're like, I'm so sorry. I'm not gonna be able to come over. Here's why. And you send me a picture and it's this tiny newborn baby deer. The cutest thing that's ever existed. It was so cute. It was so cute. And I call you and I'm like, oh, whatever you do, do not come on this walk. You must stand vigil save deer, over this deer. It did not need any saving. No. I learned. Yeah. But I thought it needed saving. But you stayed in your house all day. Oh, yeah. Watching this baby deer. Yes. Cause I was so concerned something was going to happen to it. It's the cutest thing you've ever seen. Yeah, and I also precious. am so, I love deer. I think they're just really magical. And Abby uh, has a water bowl out, you guys, <laughs> in her front yard I for do. deer. I do. We're in a drought. <laughs> We're in a drought. We're in a drought. How are they going to find the water? And honestly, the last night, one of the last times I was over, your ring doorbell camera, your outdoor yes. camera, picked up a deer drinking All out the of the, the yes. water bowl. You were the first person to ever see them because they never use it. They yeah. just like look at it and yeah. consider drinking it and never do. And then <laughs> finally, my hard work paid off. I was kind of like laughing at you in my head. I'm like, yeah, right. Like a deer is going <laughs> to drink out of this bowl. And then sure and enough, it did. did. Okay. Anyways, back to the baby deer. And you're like, what do I do? I'm like, I don't know. They don't teach us this in vet school. Also, I'm recognizing that we're going to be talking about animals and I I'm like automatically using this like way higher voice <laughs> when I'm talking to animals. Yes. And so the whole time I'm just going to be like, ah, <laughs> it's just not really how I talk. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. It's fine. So you called a wildlife person. I did because I had never been around a baby deer. <laughs> I love them, but I, and it was, I don't know. It was just in a very strange spot right. um, where our house was situated. There wasn't anywhere for the mom to really go. So I didn't know why I would have left the baby there it was a very weird spot to leave it and so I thought it was abandoned but lo and behold called a wonderful wild deer wildlife rehabber her name is Deborah um, bless you Deborah uh, and, first I have her contact now in my phone and it has her birthday so I always know when her birthday is too Deborah sweet Deborah <laughs> oh my god I've never talked to her again but I know when her birthday is and it says like what age too that's amazing um, but love her and she told me so now that everyone knows this about baby deer if they are laying still, which this one was completely silent and with their head down, they're doing exactly by nature what they were born to do. So when they're born, they are born odorless and silent and mom is obviously not. So she leaves to go feed and they are protected because predators cannot find them. I mean, my dogs had no idea that it was there the whole day. I did. You yes, know it was of there. course. I you were set a camera up standing, <laughs> so I could watch vigil. it. I used yes. our Furbo camera and moved it from the dog's room and so I could like watch him outside anytime. I got an update like every 45 <laughs> minutes. It was amazing. I mean, it was so cute. And so then later that evening, you, it happened. you let your dogs out. It, <laughs> this is when it goes down. It you let your dogs out into the front yard. Yep. To use the restroom. They had no idea the deer was there. The deer was on the side yard. No big deal. I have been watching this thing all day. Like it's my own child. And it's mother. Yeah. I was its mother. And then. And then you found out that it had its clearly own. Clearly did not trust me. <laughs> yes. Mom came flying out of nowhere, 
truly out of nowhere. Jumps your after massive all of fence. my dogs. Jumps yes. your massive fence. Yes. You guys, this is caught on her camera, her <laughs> her front house, um, like security footage. Yes. You're out there and then all of a sudden you can see Dan come running, running outside. Out. Well, I was in the living room and I could hear him yelling oh, he like, no, yeah. no, no, no. Yeah, and yeah. I thought the dogs were going after something because they've been known to chase a bunny or right. two. And he, I, I can just hear him screaming. I look out the window and I see the mom yes. in the front yard chasing the dogs. He's chasing the deer. <laughs> and it's, I mean, it's so, this it's man the funniest was video. Like, he kind of already looks like Vince Palomalu. <laughs> and he's a Steelers fan. Yeah. He was like going left, fake and right. The deer's like juking him. It like steps on ghost at one point. Yes, the deer stepped on ghost. So then I, of course, <laughs> call Josie. I'm like, is he going to be okay? Does he have There's eternal breathing? On his he side. has a hoofprint. But yeah, and so... So Dan, but the funniest thing is I'm like, what was your plan? And that's what everyone wanted mm-hmm. to know when mm-hmm. they saw the video. Like, were you going after the dogs? Were you going after the deer? He was just like one or the other. Cause he, at one point dives, takes a fall. <laughs> he took it's a, a hot mess. <laughs> he took one for the team. He and did. I just want to say he won dog dad of the century for he me. He it was amazing. Them. I'm going to have to post this video so everyone can yes. see. But also I'm like, how rude that I protected your child all day. And then you try and attack my own. I know. All that to say, if you ever find a baby deer, just leave, leave it alone. alone. Just leave, leave it alone. It alone. Go about <laughs> your life. Keep your dogs inside. <laughs> and keep your dogs inside. I'm back. So Abby and I first met because she's super duper involved here in the dog rescue community. How did you get involved? Like, have you always been involved in dog rescue? How did that come to be? So it's been 10 years, almost exactly. I was working at Warner Music Nashville, which is right down the road from us. And someone was cooing in the hallway and I was like, what's out there? And there was this puppy and my coworker, Rebecca, was fostering this little puppy named Kathy, (laughs) sweet (laughs) Kathy. And I don't know what it was about this dog. I just, I had, I guess, had rescue dogs growing up. My Mm -hmm. dad rescued a couple dogs, but I just wasn't super well-versed in the rescue world. And uh, my mom had had little Bichons. I had a lab at the time that I got from a breeder and um, I just didn't really know anything. But this feral brown dog just stole my heart. And I text Dan was like, should we get this dog? He was like, bring her home. And so brought her home that day and as a foster. And two days later, we text the organization and said we were going to keep her. But it was actually the very first ever Pimp and Joy Week that the Bobby Bones show has done yeah. with Amy and honoring her mom. And so it was like the very first one ever. There were signs all over Nashville about Pimp and Joy. And so we, when we adopted this dog, I was like, I think we need to name her Joy. We did this amazing thing. We rescued a dog. And so that is Joy. And Joy, I always say, is just the reason that I am who I am and what I do because from there I got involved with the rescue that she was at Proverbs 1210 Animal Rescue here locally they're a wonderful organization that's where I got Biggie from yes sweet Biggie yeah (laughs) Um, they're wonderful and so I just started volunteering and then from there Dan and I probably fostered about 40 dogs and I just really fell in love with rescue and Mm -hmm. rescue animals and now we have four and I would have a hundred more if I could but they, um, I, five years ago, I guess it was met our friend Catherine and she was also just rescue girly. And so we hit it off very quickly. And when she wanted to start wags and walks, I was like fully in support because even LaVon, who's the director of Proverbs, she will tell you there is a lot of room for rescue in oh, this yeah. town. There is, Especially in the South. Exactly. And just extreme overpopulation here. And we just don't. And as Nashville grows, that problem grows. And we're not really fixing the problem with spay and neuter or anything like that. So there's just going to be a lot more dogs and yeah. a lot more people. And so when Catherine started WAGS, I just wanted to be involved. Catherine's one of those people where you're like, she's going to do something amazing no matter what it is. And we're just all really lucky that it's dog related. And so I've been helping her um, for the last five years. And then I started doing development for her. I do development and partnership consulting. And then as well as run her development committee, which you are on. 
yes. <laughs> which you're aware of because Very you are so. a member of it. Yes. Um, and so it's just been, it's just a huge part of my life advocating for it. I always say, uh, I never want to judge anyone or make anyone feel bad or wrong for however they choose to get a dog. As long as you are taking care of that animal, that's all I care about. But if I can just talk about my experience in rescue and with rescue animals and advocate for them and just even just showing whether you get it from a reputable breeder or hopefully rescue, just show the level of care that I give my animals so that they want to care for their animal in the same same way. way. That's more um, my goal. Um, And I always wanted to just, it was something I felt like was an uphill battle for the 10 years that I've been in rescue In like New York, in LA, in major cities, Austin, rescue is just what you do. It's cool. It's fun. Like there's these huge rescues and it just was never that in Nashville. And I just felt like there was as weird as that sounds. There was a market for rescue and a need for it because it wasn't, it was more an educational thing. People just didn't think to rescue. And once we could get them to and educate them to, you can see how amazing it is. And I think that we're doing that with WAGs, oh, which for is sure. really exciting. Absolutely. Um, because they're awesome. And Mac, you're being <laughs> so good. She is. <laughs> She's like, see, rescues are perfect. See, 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 look how cute we are. <laughs> Hi, my name's Josh. I'm from the podcast The Imperfects, where we interview uh, well-known people who look like they have perfect lives, but like most of us, in fact all of us, they're often far from it. We interview people like James Clear and Adam Grant. What do you do with the feeling of being an imposter? It's really tempting to trust your own judgment over other people's. What you're forgetting is that other people see you more objectively. And I think what that means is if multiple people believe in you, it's probably time to believe them. Listen to The Imperfects on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Hey fam, I'm Simone Boyce. I'm Danielle Robay. And we're the hosts of The Bright Side, the podcast from Hello Sunshine that's guaranteed to light up your day. And we can't wait for you to hear our recent episode with actor, activist, and 90s icon, Tatiana Ali. Something got freed up in me mm-hmm. where it was just like, do what you imagine, because... This is all imagination anyway. Listen to The Bright Side from Hello Sunshine on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. As the number one audio company, iHeartMedia gives you access to all. Every audience, live conversations, trusted influencers, and the insights and data you need to grow. iHeartMedia is your access company. Go to iHeartResults.com for more. One of the things that we had bonded about at the beginning was we both had dogs from breeders. Yes, we did. You had Miller, your lab, and I had Luca, my Great Dane. And it's not to knock, like there are some amazing breeders out there that do a really good job. And it's like you said, it's no judgment on those that decide to get dogs from breeders. But I think once you've had a rescue dog, like it really changes your perspective. It does. My situation with Miller ended up being really unfortunate. I did so much research and it's not even a knock on the breeder. They're a really, really reputable breeder, but he was just never really well. And he ended up passing really young and it was obviously devastating. But outside of that, you know, I started getting involved with with rescue, starting with joy. And it just, I don't know. There is, there's just this, I don't know. I feel like they just look at you and you're like, I know you saved me. They do. They know. Yeah. That's Miller was the best dog. So sweet. 10 out of 10 good boy, Mm -hmm. but I just don't feel like he ever needed me. He was a trust fund baby. He was. (laughs) These these dogs need me. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, exactly. They need me. This close to death, truly, if you think about it. Like they wouldn't, probably wouldn't be alive if it wasn't. And I think they feel that way still every time I leave the house. Yeah, (laughs) exactly. (laughs) We're this close to death. We're we're not going to make it. (laughs) Yeah, it's so true. I mean, I just think it like really changes your perspective and... I don't know if it makes us like gives us like a martyr complex or something. I don't know. But I just feel like even more attached to them and just the thought of the life they lived before. And it's true. And Oakley, like when my shepherd was on about to be euthanized, you just think about it and it really just. And he's so gorgeous. Changes the way you think about things. Yeah. He's a good boy. He hasn't come to the podcast yet. Well. Just the little guys. Well, he needs to be with his friends here. Yeah, I know. His hair can mix in with 
all the, the other all the hair. other dog hair. <laughs> I know our prayer podcast set up. We've got dog hair just everywhere at this point. It's like my house. It's fine. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, okay, so you've got your four dogs. Yes. Currently, give us a little rundown of each one. Okay, so I touched on Joy a little bit. Yeah, we're gonna circle back. To I'll her. circle back to her. I, I know we're gonna talk about her a lot today, <laughs> yeah. but so I'll keep her brief. Um, yeah. But she was number one. Named during Pimp and Joy Week. Love okay, her Kathy. more than anything. Yes, she used to be Kathy. She was a feral mama. And she was not the feral mama. Born to a feral mama. She okay. was one of nine puppies. And she, they just all are kind of inherently, I keep in touch with some of her siblings. And they're just all inherently a little nervous, shy, born to... The wilderness dogs. Yeah. Um, She's truly one of the most innately shy dogs I've is, ever met. But she is also the best dog in the world. Is she is so obedient and sweet and she wants lovely. To yes. Uh, she is just a little hesitant. Just nervous. Yeah. Of everything. Understandably <laughs> everything. so. But she could not be sweeter. And she is the best thing in the entire world. I love her so much. And then after that, we were fostering this dog, Natchez was his name. He was found dodging cars on Natchez Trace, hence the name. And he actually was our very first foster dog. And in that time of fostering him, he was so funny. He, When I was volunteering at Proverbs, he was brought in off the streets, acting so scared, hiding in the back of a crate, like shivering. So of course they told me he didn't have a foster. So I called Dan. I was like, can we foster our first dog? And he said, sure. And that's one thing about Dan. If He will never tell me no. People are always like, oh, is Dan like, won't let you get any more dogs? I'm like, no, I have to make <laughs> like, me not get Dan, any more dogs. Dan's the problem. <laughs> Dan always says yes. <laughs> and so I get this little do- Natchez dog, a sweater, because it was winter and we go home and he is an absolute terror like in, in the best way he's, he's like I'm so, not shy <laughs> he's so sweet but I was like you duped me and yeah. um I instantly fell in love with him is that chief that is now chief oh my god so, and then over that like foster time was actually when Miller got sick and died okay and I had already been like I don't know how I'm gonna give this dog up I love him but Dan had just started his career we were traveling so much anyone who like knows the country music start I mean artists are gone he was gone like 250 days a year and so I was like there's just no world in which we can have three dogs and as a single mother as a single mother and obviously not the way that I ever anticipated anything happening but Miller unexpectedly passed and I remember calling LaVon the director just bawling and saying Miller passed away but also I have to keep Natchez because I can't get rid of another dog and he became chief and and him and Dan are like pretty tight they are so tight yeah and he is absolutely hilarious he's so opinionated and so bossy and Mm -hmm. we had no idea by giving him the name chief he was named after the Kansas City Chiefs but he just fully embraced that personality he was like I am I am chief if one of his siblings like kind of walks by or looks at him he'll go he's a little gremlin like you tell him chief (laughs) if anyone knows the like Mr. I think it's Mr. Bub's Instagram account he's like a little Mm -hmm. chihuahua mix brown thing Mm -hmm. that is Mm-hmm. really really growly they are the same yeah they, the same thing they are separated at birth <laughs> uh, <laughs> and then right before Dan and I got married we were fo- um, asked to foster a dog and I said no because we were about to get married I was planning a wedding and it was a lot and then they know that I'm a sucker so they sent me a photo of this dog that's and- just cool <laughs> I know that is called like, manipulation. Well, this is what he looks like and he <laughs> looked I don't know he looked maybe like a 50 pound husky mix of sorts but what got me was he was gray his whole neck and chest were gray even though he was an all-white dog because he had been chained outside and so I again being me I said okay we'll take him and we'll figure it out with the wedding or I think I said I need him moved before my wedding (laughs) and so he came we go to pick him up and they brought out an 11 pound dog to us and I was like this is not the right dog I was gonna say when you said 50 I was Mm -hmm. like did you mean 15 yes well I he looked big in this photo and they bring him out they're like no this is they were calling him ghost pepper and so they were like this is ghost pepper I'm like no this is a big like I'm picking up a big dog and this was ghost pepper and so we brought him home and he is now ghost, but 
even though I protested getting a dog before our wedding, um, Dan was in charge of getting their outfits for the wedding. That's and we amazing. were still fostering Ghost and we did our engagement photos and Chief and Joy were in the engagement photos. Ghost was not. He was just our foster dog. And then their outfits showed up in the mail and there was a dress for Joy and two tuxedos. <laughs> I was like, Dan, did you get Ghost a tuxedo? And he said, yes, I did. I said, okay, well, if Ghost is in our wedding photos, then we're obviously keeping him. He yeah. was like, that was 1,000% my plan. <laughs> so he was in the wedding That's photos. That's when you know you he made stayed. it. <laughs> <laughs> he did not leave That's after that. Amazing. And then And macaroni. he's really yeah. obsessed with you. Oh, yes. Ghost, Ghost loves cares. his mom. He cares about nothing in this world but me. Yeah. He, truly. Yeah. I, it's, we will talk about what is happening with Joy here shortly, but yeah. all the other dogs when Joy was at the vet uh, all day, they were all acting weird. Ghost could not care less. He's like, because oh, okay. he is just as long as I'm there. <laughs> he loves He's his fine. mom. He's either going to be in my closet or be in my lap. Otherwise, I feel like every woman owner deserves that kind of. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it is unconditional. It's unconditional. This man loves me. He does. <laughs> his mom's boy. <laughs> he does. I always make fun of, not make fun, but like I'm like the moms that have boy sons and they're just like obsessed with them. Yes. Like, okay, that's crazy, but like I kind of get it. Yeah, <laughs> I kind of get it. No, he loves me yeah. more than anything. And yeah. and. Now we joke, I'll always say to Ghost, and I'm like, your dad didn't even want to keep you. <laughs> He's like, that is not He's true. like, I bought the tuxedo, okay? <laughs> I can't let him know that it was me. No. He loves me too much. Yeah, the um, break his heart. Th well, noisy, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, you kick. Well, noisy over here is like, is it time to talk about me? She's yet? like, hello. <laughs> <laughs> then a couple of years later came this one. Um Oh, also the the ghost thing. Back to ghost, really quick. Yeah. The gray from his chain. He just to like talk about rescue and how awful things can be. Mm -hmm. Sometimes this little thing that I thought was not that it is ever okay to chain up a dog, but a dog being chained in someone's front yard also led me to believe this was a bigger dog. Why anyone would have a heavy chain on a dog, but let alone on a, he was 11 pounds. Okay. He's yeah. probably, he's healthy now. So he's probably like 18, yeah. but he was just this emaciated 11 pound little thing. Yeah. I mean, the chain probably weighed more than him. A thousand percent. Yeah. It was awful. Terrible. It took us like two months to get, to shampoo that gray out of him. Yeah. I mean, just some of the shape that these pets come into yeah. the rescue and it's just, it makes you question humanity. It does. True. <laughs> <laughs> Macaroni. Um, that's her rooster crow. That was amazing. She was like, what is that figure? Uh, well, you're back. <laughs> Mac, back. Mac just saw a strange man behind the set. <laughs> She's... I may have peed myself a little. That was a very loud bark. And the anti, I mean, now yeah, she's she just visits. like, now I'm just going to lay down. She says, and I'm good. I saved you all. You're, you're welcome. Thank you for being on guard. <laughs> well, Mac came into the picture as... A re a fo another foster fail, mm -hmm. of course. Taylor's but, oldest time. Yes. She, I hadn't fostered in a minute. And so they asked, Proverbs asked if I wanted to come pick out a puppy to foster. And I said, sure. And I actually went to pick up a completely different dog. And she was sitting there and they're like, well, she needs one too. So I was like, well, I kind of like this one. Yeah. <laughs> and so she came home. Um, she did have the ear like that when she was really little. And it was the cutest thing that's ever the one happened. floppy one, the one floppy straight up. one straight up um it's the cutest ear in the whole world it is and so when she was really really little they were doing that i was like man this dog and i knew right away i was gonna have a hard time also when they're little her. you don't know if it's gonna stay like that no you have no idea so the fact that it did uh, well and went, awesome. and it went down for a minute okay i went to the gym one day and came back and the ear was down i was like oh sad and then <laughs> Lo and behold, a couple weeks later, back up, and it has never, never gone away. It doesn't really make sense either. The ear is so thick and so heavy. There's just no world in which it should stand up. No. But she's it special sure does. on she, all accounts. She is the most special dog. <laughs> so this one was definitely my choice. I couldn't live without her. Yeah. Um, she's your girl. I love her so much, and she is just one of a kind <laughs> in every way it really is one of a kind Very i'm not sure goofy. i've ever met another dog like her in I my know. life everything about her she has like a weird funny gait when she walks the ear eternal puppy yes she's now five but everyone who meets her thinks she's six months old still yeah acts like a puppy looks like a puppy she's perfect yes we love her we love her tremendously um 
So last but not least is Joy. Yes. And you've kind of already told us a little bit about her. Yes. I didn't know her name was Kathy. That's a fun fact for me today. It's not a great name. Joy for is all. much better. Yes. <laughs> um, and recently you guys have been through a bit of a health yeah. journey. It's Do you want to kind lot. of walk us through yeah. what's happened? Yes. And you can chime in if I <laughs> miss, make any mistakes because you've been right there with us. Yes. <laughs> um, I was on a walk with Mac and Joy and... Um, it was interesting because early in the walk, Mac being Mac pulled pretty hard when Joy was peeing mm -hmm. and she yelped. And so I like made sure everything was good. Everyone was good. We walked and at towards the end of the walk, I was like, oh my gosh, there is a huge mass on like her, her backside, mm -hmm. right to the left of her tail. And of course I immediately called you um, and we, I got her into the vet the next day and I would have thought it was a hernia yeah. possibly as yeah. a non-vet because it happened right after Mac pulled or like on a her. little swelling. Yeah. Something from that initial pull. Um, I took her in the next morning and a different vet did a little sample, did an ultrasound and didn't see anything. Um, nothing about it looked very strange and so well I, I shouldn't say that everyone thought it looked strange but <laughs> nothing was coming up so we and, went home yeah and for listeners what we will often do if there's a new growth and I think it's really interesting too for you to be like hey it looked like it li literally just popped up yeah a lot of times they can you know new bumps on our dogs can slowly grow but there are times when it quite literally yeah will pop up overnight I started to like second guess myself a little bit being like would I really not see this but anyone who knows me <laughs> knows I am with these dogs a hundred percent of my life and yeah. I just don't think I would have not noticed something like that I'm so hyper aware of them and Dan hadn't noticed anything and even I have sweet Brooke who comes to my house to trim their nails every three weeks and she when I saw her she, the next time she was like no that was not there so mm -hmm. I was like okay this really You're like I am not crazy. I'm like this did not this was not here and so initially it was just potentially a hematoma I was told to put a warm compress on it a few times a day and then go from there and when Josie got back in town she was like it's weird that it hasn't gone down at all. I'm going to come over and get my own sample. So she was coming over already to go on a walk where I did not find a baby deer. So we did indeed go. <laughs> Successful walk. We did indeed go on the walk. Um, and so she came over and got samples herself. And then from there, it kind of yeah. really spiraled. Escalated. Yeah. Um, Whenever we get a sample from a new growth, it's called doing an aspiration. So a fine needle aspirate and it can be really difficult sometimes to get an answer on we call it an FNA because we're taking such a tiny needle, we're sticking it into a growth. So it's a really small sample size and some growths will exfoliate cells really easily. And we can look under the microscope and be like, oh yeah, this is definitely what this is. And others can be really difficult. And in Joy's case, her sample did not exfoliate cells very well. No, it did not. So in looking under the microscope, it was a lot of red blood cells. Mm -hmm which is like, okay, if we hit a, a blood vessel and then there were some, a couple questionable cells where I was like, mm, I think we should have the pathologist look at this. Yeah. So then we sent it off to the pathologist. Yes. And then it unfortunately came back with what is indicative of sarcoma, mm -hmm. um, which I know a lot about now. <laughs> so I can say this too, ask in Josie, but mm -hmm. is a soft tissue cancer. And what is interesting about this whole scenario with joy has been that uh, it came up out of nowhere we immediately got her into surgery Josie referred me to this incredible surgeon his name is Dr. Powinski we love you Dr. Powinski and we love sharks um he loves sharks <laughs> I've learned this like the animal shark yeah I okay. love sharks <laughs> um so I since joy has been recovering she has uh different sets of pajamas and I sent her in with shark pajamas the other day and I, he was like, wait, did you guys do that for me? And I was like, what? And he <laughs> wears sharks on his surgical like caps. Really? That's so cute. Yes. And so he thought I knew that, but I didn't, but now I will always put That's her amazing. in shark pajamas for him. Um, but he has just been so wonderful. So thank you for that recommendation. I never on this podcast <laughs> thought we'd be saying we love sharks. We love sharks. <laughs> um, but yes, he has just been 
wonderful. And he removed the mass originally. And this has probably been what, three weeks, a month now? About a it's month. It's been a lot. Yeah. A while. It's gone by very quickly. But so we, he removed the mass. Um, it's in a really tricky spot, like I said, to the left of her tail. So the incision was pretty big. He got surrounding tissue as well and then sent it off. And again, back to this kind of being a weird situation, this sarcoma is more likely than not a grade one or a grade two tumor. And so they would, we would just move on. Like he would remove it, we'd get clean margins and then just keep an eye on it from there. But unfortunately, Joy's came back as a grade three, which is more likely to spread, uh, more likely to come back, yada, yada, all of the sad, horrible things that I'm not going to get into because I'm emotionally drained. (laughs) Um, But um, all the bad stuff. And so the options from there were... Not to interrupt you, yes, but really please, fast for listeners. It. Yeah. Because other people are maybe yes. in the same situation as I you. I want yada yada. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> you can yada yada. I want you to. I just think that for other listeners out there, when you find a new growth on your yeah. dog, like exactly what Abby did is like the path that I would recommend. So you get an aspirate to maybe potentially get an idea of what's going on. And then from there, even if you don't get an answer, hopefully you do, I recommend going into surgery, taking it off and sending it out for biopsy because that's going to tell us exactly what it is. Did we get it all? And what do we need to do going forward? Absolutely. And um, to like touch on that too, I remember sitting there for that first surgery and um, Dr. Poinsky being like, you know, there is a chance that we'll send this off and it'll be absolutely nothing. And he, I, he wasn't saying that to like get my hopes up. He was saying that like this surgery is expensive. I'm like, I said to him, I said, if you told me that payment was my left arm, but, or my right arm, my dominant one, that's fine too. And like both arms, yeah. but I would save her. I would have given him both arms. Right. So mm-hmm. I told him, please do not, we will do whatever is necessary what for her. Do. <laughs> do not worry. Um, and so, but unfortunately it came back worst case scenario, which was highly unlikely. Mm-hmm. And so after that first surgery and we got the pathology report back on the mass itself, um, knowing that it was grade three and he did not, um, in that initial thing, we did not get clean margins. And so the options were radiation, which found out does not happen in Nashville. You got to travel somewhere for that. And it's also really hard on a dog, especially a nervous dog like Joy. Um, Another option is to just watch it and do nothing, which is obviously not an option in our household. Um, And (laughs) then the uh, third was a second surgery where they would kind of just do the same thing, but try to get better margins. Mm -hmm. And he felt very confident that he could do that with a second surgery. So in having faith and trust in him and Dr. Josie, (laughs) we sent her back in. And thankfully we just got news that he did get clean margins. So he was able to get everything this go around the soft tissue he sent back in, came back with no cancer. So that was step one in all of this. And obviously really great news since then it are just having a really hard time keeping her incision closed because it's in a really tricky spot every Mm -hmm. time she sits or stands or pees or poops or does anything a dog does, even without extra activity, she is putting a, a lot of tension on it. So we have now gone to treating it as an open wound, which smells awesome it's a challenge it's really it's, <laughs> it's awesome. a challenge it really smells good all, in the, all the while <laughs> i will say the silver lining in this whole thing has been her jammies oh her jammies are the best we've got, we've got strawberry, strawberry jammies, sharks llamas yeah and diapers to match i mean it's yeah. wonderful it's really really good so yeah the jammies are great we're going in for bandage changes and working on it and then once we can get this little thing to heal up we will head for chemo yeah we'll do chemotherapy we've got an amazing oncology team here in nashville and the biggest part with her condition is where the the primary tumor was is clean now clean with margins and so that is going to give her a great prognosis absolutely and um again i'm learning about sarcoma so uh, with that grade three tumor it's just the reason we know that there isn't any spread in terms of visible tumors because we've done x-rays but there's still about I don't know it's like 40 or 50 percent chance of microscopic spread because of the grade of her original mass so we'll that's why we're going I know a lot of people are wondering 
why yeah. um, I, I'm getting you asked because get I've moved. shared this on Instagram. Um, yes, yes, if we've removed it with surgery, why are we still doing chemo? Yep. Um, and that is why we are still doing Just chemo. Just in case there's any yes. little spread. Just to be safe. Um, and I've also learned that chemo in dogs is quite easy. Yeah, that's a really good point. I feel like, you know, chemotherapy in humans, we really target every rapidly dividing cell in the body and humans it can be really taxing on them yes. and dogs. We definitely prioritize their quality of life a little bit more. So although yes, it's effective, we're not like they're not down and out. They tend to be, you know, still have their appetite and their tails wagging. Like they're yeah. very much, they don't lose their hair for the most part. So yeah. yeah, I've heard. And I know that, um, I mean, you've talked to Joy's oncologist more than I have. Mm-hmm. I actually have not talked to her, but I've heard she's wonderful. She's um, amazing. Yes. Dr. Powinski has said she's wonderful yes. as well. Um, Shout but, out Dr. Lucas. She's hi, awesome. Dr. Lucas. <laughs> uh, can't wait to meet you. I love uh, <laughs> Hi, this is Hugh here from the Imperfects podcast, where we chat to well-known people whose lives seem perfect from the outside, but through our discussions, they share the vulnerabilities and imperfections that make them who they are. We chat to people like James Clear and Adam Grant. You could have hidden potential to be a better partner, to be a better friend, improve as a parent. There's so much discussion of how do we build our careers? When are we asking the question of how do we build our character? Listen to The Imperfects on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Hey fam, I'm Simone Boyce. I'm Danielle Robay. And we're the hosts of The Bright Side, the daily podcast from Hello Sunshine that is guaranteed to light up your day. Every weekday, we bring you conversations with the culture makers who inspire us. Like our recent episode with reality TV star Hannah Brown. We talked all about going from The Bachelorette to writing her debut novel and what she's learned about love along the way. I have had to redefine what love is. And love to me really is about feeling safe and seen at the same time. And it's creating a relationship. Like we built this relationship and that's really what love is. I didn't know any of that at 24. Listen to The Bright Side from Hello Sunshine on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Some people won't give you the real talk on drugs, but it's time we know the facts. Fentanyl is often laced into illicit drugs and used to make fake versions of prescription pills. You can't see it, taste it, or smell it. Suppliers mix fentanyl into their products because it's potent and cheap, and the dealer might not even know. Keep yourself and others safe by knowing the real deal on fentanyl. Get the facts. Go to realdealonfentanyl.com. This message is brought to you by the Ad Council. For me, this has been, and I haven't really shared this with you, but this has been like a really great reminder for me and like just made me develop even more empathy for owners and my clients in that so often I'm calling people and giving them bad news and I'll just, not that I'm cold hearted, but I'm a little bit desensitized where I'm like, okay, this is what it is. This is what we need to do next. Like I'm very like of course, empathize greatly, but this is what we need to do to take care of this. And then I hang up the phone and I don't hear from them again until the next step. And so being with you throughout this is just like reminded me that when I hang up the phone, all the flood of emotions that is happening on the other end and like how deeply attached we are to our animals. Absolutely. Watching me have a full breakdown. Thinking about it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's just, you know, it has just reminded me. Well, and I have a lot of empathy for you for having to be that person. Cause <laughs> fun, I, but... I know. And I'm so grateful to you for walking with us through all of that. Cause it has been so helpful and cause it, I know it's not, I've been a hot mess so, and that's not <laughs> no. super fun. You've handled it beautifully. <laughs> oh, truly. I don't know about that, but <laughs> well, you have. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. It's been something, but I'm, I'm optimistic and positive and I will do everything I can for her, but I know we've talked about this and I was talking to her surgeon about it too the other day. It's just, I think with it being joy, I would, I don't want anything ever to happen to any of my dogs, but it's just this heightened thing of she is such a part, like she is the reason I am who I am. She's why I'm in rescue. She's why I have become a decade of yeah, I am your purpose. Whole, I feel like every, I'm just the dog girl to so many people, and that is why. <laughs> like, right, it's all her. <laughs> right, absolutely. Yes, yeah. She's, she's a been a huge part, big big part of my life. 
You too, Mac. (laughs) Don't worry. Mac's like, I'm going to bark again. (laughs) Mac is like almost half asleep at this point. She's so funny because she can be so, so exuberant and then just so chill. So chill. (laughs) And you've just got the derpiest face. (laughs) Yeah, I do. (laughs) The ears. Well, I know Joy is going to do great. She is. And she's in the best of hands. I mean, she's got a medical team. She has a whole medical team. Bigger than most humans ever get. I had someone ask me the other day, like, is she seeing just like uh, her normal vet for this? I was like, (laughs) oh "Um, no. (laughs) She has multiple vets, (laughs) an oncologist, a surgeon. I've got my friend friend. who's an oncologist in DC (laughs) working on this. Yeah. I mean, this is a, this is goes nationwide. She's a fancy girl. Pretty much. (laughs) Okay. Well, on a brighter note, we always like to end this podcast with, is there anything that you do at home? home when you're in the quiet of your own home and people aren't watching like funny silly with your animals I know you and thousands Dan. of things um, I bet. so one thing that I think is very funny that Dan does is he says he needs to get them soft goods and also we don't have any rules in our house with our dogs yeah. um sorry trainers <laughs> listening um they they run the house that is just you just pay the mortgage. Exactly. Yeah. It is 1000% their house. So they are already on soft goods. <laughs> they are on couch, bed, chair, whatever else. But he doesn't think that's soft enough for them. Mm. So then when it's time for us to like watch TV, he gets out all the soft goods. So there are <laughs> blankets, pillows. I mean, it's just covered in soft goods. Soft and he'll, goods. Yes, and he'll, like, we were on the, the road last weekend and he was like, do they need soft goods? I'm like they're fine. <laughs> they're sitting on the couch for like one minute. They're going they're to be, be okay, okay, Dan. All of the soft goods. That is we have hilarious. after dinner treat, and they are so accustomed to it. They know like the second I'm putting down my fork to finish mm-hmm. my meal because they know they get their treat as soon as I'm done eating. So after dinner treat, they go straight to the cabinet. After Gosh. dinner nightcap. Yeah, there's so many. <laughs> I'm dying. I need you to send me a picture of them having soft goods. I tonight. will. That's I soft will. goods time. So many soft goods. That is amazing. <laughs> so many soft goods. I have said it once. I will say it again. I want to come back as one of your dogs in my next We'd life. We'd love to have you. They're living <laughs> the dream. We'd love to have You've you. You've sent me pictures. You're like, is it okay for me to feed them this? And their bowl is like a healthy little mix of dog food, some strawberries, <laughs> a blueberry, an apple slice, a carrot. I'm like, yes. oh my God, it's amazing. They do get banana time as well with mm. Dan when he's making his smoothie. Banana so time. He gives up half of his banana for his smoothie because that other half goes to the dogs and he slices it up and <laughs> spreads almond butter on each individual <laughs> slice of banana. I don't know. Who do you think the bigger sucker is? You or Dan? Ooh, that's a great like, question. Like who's the disciplinarian more so than... They definitely respect me more than okay. Dan. <laughs> <laughs> but I think because just inherently because I'm the one that's always around. Yeah. I I mean you're their mama. Yes, and we it's just it's like hilarious to watch us walk around the house because it's just me and then like my little train of and like animals. four dogs just yes, running around always, at all times. I love that. It's really it's, it's really wonderful. And it's nice with him being on the road so often yes. and traveling. You've got your crew. I've got my buddies, and you guys get to go too sometimes. Yeah. How do they do when they're on tour? They actually do great. Do they're they? really good. Chief and Joy have done it for so long and Max pretty adaptable and so is Ghost. He's just like He's like as long as my mom's there. there. Yeah, exactly. He's like as give give me a soft good and my mom and I'm good. <laughs> a soft good and my mom. <laughs> it's like I got my blanket. So they just good. hang on the bus. Like they, they do. just do it. Okay. Yeah, we we'll walk around like if we're somewhere nice, like uh, there's always, you know, a river or right. something nearby. near the arena yes. or wherever you are. We'll go on a walk and hang and then during the show they just chill. chill. I'm coming back as one of your dogs. Please, it has to happen. We'd love to have you. That is amazing. We would feel honored. <laughs> I'll be a chihuahua. I might bite, but. <laughs> you know I love a chihuahua. I do. I've got a soft spot. Well, thank you so much for coming on. Thank, thank you, you for, for sharing me. your story with Joy. I know I will be following along because I am very much invested in you her You are care, very invested. But all the listeners as well. And if you don't follow Abby, you should because watching her and her dogs is mostly just dogs but i am sharing about joy yes and maybe sharks now too (laughs) i guess i do like the ocean yeah very fair well i love you very much thank you you for coming on thank you for having me you're welcome bye (laughs) did we nail it we did it All right. What a great conversation with Abby Smyers. And we will definitely be keeping joy in our prayers and just keeping up with her journey and seeing how they're doing. Unfortunate, but I'm glad that they have you. Yeah. All the good vibes for joy. It's so, I mean, we touched on it in the interview, but it's so important to catch things early. So 
anytime your pets have a new lump or bump like that, just getting them into your vet because it is a time sensitive situation. And the fact that Abby caught it so quickly really you know, hopefully means that Joy will have a much better prognosis. Yeah. And is a testament to the owner that she is too, because she's obviously someone who really pays close attention yes, to her animals and 100%. keeps up with things. So really, really awesome just to hear her. And if you follow Abby on social media, you will keep, be able to keep up with all their adorable rescues because they are so darn cute. Yes. At Abby Smyers on Instagram, her dogs are adorable. All of her content is amazing. Yeah. So give her a follow for sure. All right. One of my favorite parts of the show always. We are heading into paw and order this week. All right. For paw and order this week, number one is I would not forget to run an annual fecal on my dog. I feel like so often we think about annual blood work or an annual urinalysis and their vaccines that oftentimes the fecal will kind of get overlooked. But this time of year, it always makes me I just always remember how important it is. And we just see so many GI parasites. I actually just had a dog the other day throw up an entire worm. We're doing a wellness exam. And this dog is totally healthy. And I'm like touching his belly, listening to his heart. And all of a sudden it's throws up and an entire worm comes out. I'm like, how big? It was like probably this. No. For those who can't see like six <laughs> inches, maybe like pretty big, a long round worm. You see people like the thing now is the parasite cleanse that like humans are doing. Mm -hmm. He was like, I am doing my own parasite cleanse. Everyone. I'll show you humans. <laughs> oh, the owner was dog. like green in the face. I'm like, it's okay. <laughs> You're like, <laughs> I have had anal, anal glands in my face. <laughs> explode on my face sir a worm is nothing nothing, nothing. once again I love my job I love my job <laughs> um but yeah I know it sounds it is disgusting but uh GI parasites are really easy to take care of and if they're not taken care of they can cause long-term effects so run an annual fecal I think people like I know me as a dog owner when you go to the vet and they're like we're gonna have to do a fecal test you just dread it because you're like, I have to go home and I have to put this poop in a cup mm -hmm. and then return it back to the vet I think that's why people don't remember. overlook it. They overlook it because they're like, I don't want to do this. Yeah. Yeah. You got to make got your poo. Yeah. Or just if you're going in for your dog's annual, just know and just pick it up preemptively. Yeah. Bring it in oh, a little a baggie idea. and just bring it with you. Okay. So you can do that. It's not going to like Absolutely. affect the sample. As long as it's like within the last 12 to 24 hours, you're good to go. My French bulldog always vet's office walk in every single time she'd poop in the vet's office and I don't know why she was not a poop in the See? house kind of dog, but she was like, here's my fecal sample. That's a good girl. That's <laughs> yeah. the kind of patient we need <laughs> right in the front. Just giving me a sample area. right yeah. off the bat. Yep. For sure. Okay. Number two, I would not forget to ask my vet if what my pet has is zoonotic. Zoonotic means can a human contract this disease from their animal? Okay. So if your pet has a cough, if it has a skin rash, if it has a tummy ache, I think it's always a great idea to be like, hey, can I get this? Can my cat get this? Can um, my children get it? Yeah. Can they're the ones that are going to be touching it. <laughs> yep, exactly. And I actually, I had a case a few weeks ago where this cat came in and he was super itchy and had lesions all over his face. And I'm looking at him and I'm like, you know, this could be bacterial. I'm not entirely sure what's going on. And I look at the owner and she has this like perfectly circular lesion on her arm. And I was like, um, does that itch? And she was like, yeah, it really itches. And I was like, you know, I'm not a human doctor, but I'm pretty sure that's ringworm yeah. and cats carry ringworm. And I'm pretty sure your cat probably gave it to you. So, and lo and behold, we ended up testing him and he did have ringworm and the owner got better, but it's just, yeah, yeah, just good to know if you can contract it from your animal. Most of the time, no, but in the instances you can, it's good to know. Yeah, for sure. Ringworm with horses is always something like that is a little more obvious on them. Yeah. And I've have had so many friends of mine that have just not paid attention and got, ended up with it. ringworm. Yeah. It's so interesting. Ringworm, like 10 of us could be in a room handling a cat with ringworm and seven of us wouldn't get it. But then there's the three, like people, some people for whatever reason are so susceptible to it. Mm. I always get it. You always get I it. I just look at them and I get it. I'm like, dang it. <laughs> okay. Uh, um, number three, I would not say my pet isn't in pain when it's limping. And this is at no fault at all to owners, but a lot of times what I'll see is a dog will come in, it's limping and they'll be like, yeah, but like, you know, he's not in pain. He's doing fine. And I'm like, actually my job as a veterinarian is to detect when animals are in pain because they can't tell us. So I have to be an advocate for them. Obviously limping is a pretty 
clear indication that yeah. something's uncomfortable. And so even though your pet might still be eating and drinking normally, wanting to go for a run, I know my dog would go running on three legs if he had to, like he would never yeah. say no to a walk. That doesn't mean that they're not in pain and in discomfort. And so it's something to be like, take pretty seriously. And they're people pleasers. Yeah. Dogs are. So yes. they're like, okay, I'll suck it up and we'll just go for our walk because they want to be with you. Exactly. And I think of that too. Like if I sprain my ankle, I can still eat and go to work and, you know, get ready for the day, but right. it doesn't mean I don't, should be walking around. Yeah. And doesn't mean you don't need some ibuprofen yeah. to get through your day. Some painkillers. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So yeah, that's good to know. Cause I think too, there's a lot of dogs that go a little hard sometimes when they're playing fetch and stuff. And like, we've had that happen where a, one of our dogs had like sprained her foot mm -hmm. and so she'd be fine. But then when she'd play, she'd start limping a little bit. And, you know, at the beginning we were like, oh, she'll be fine. But no, she needed, she needed a little anti-inflammatory. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So just, you know, keeping an eye on them and it's not always about eating and drinking and want to go do things. I mean, it's all the other signs too. <laughs> yes, so for sure. Important to know. Awesome. Well, it was so great to have Abby Smyers on the show today and uh, for everyone listening, don't forget you guys can rate and review wherever you guys listen to podcasts and feel free as always to reach out. My Instagram handle is at Dr. Josie vet. Feel free to submit your questions, any feedback comments you have. We want to hear it all. Yeah. Thanks for joining us in the vet's office. Hey fam, I'm Simone Boyce. I'm Danielle Robay. We're the hosts of The Bright Side. And we can't wait for you to hear our recent episode with comedians, sisters, and history makers, Amber Ruffin and Lacey Lamar. There are no people funnier than Black women. Find a Black lady librarian. She will have you rolling. Listen to The Bright Side on America's number one podcast network, iHeart. Open your free iHeart app and search The Bright Side and start listening now. Hey everyone, this is Molly and Matt, and we're the hosts of Grown Up Stuff How to Adult, a podcast from Ruby Studio and iHeart Podcasts. It's a show dedicated to helping you figure out the trickiest parts of adulting. Like how to start planning for retirement, creating a healthy skincare routine, understanding when and how much to tip someone, and so much more. Let's learn about all of it and then some. Listen to Grown Up Stuff How to Adult on America's number one podcast network, iHeart. Open your free iHeart app and search Grown Up Stuff. Grown Up Stuff. Our iHeartRadio Music Festival, presented by Capital One, September 20th and 21st. T-Mobile Arena here in Las Vegas. Stream live only on Hulu. Don't miss Big Sean, Camila Cabello, Doji Cat, Dua Lipa, Gwen Stefani, Halsey, Hosier, Keith Urban, New Kids on the Block, Paramore, Shabuzi, The Black Crows, Thomas Red. Victoria Monet and more. Buy tickets now with AXS.com.